Wow. Look at I got. Look at this. For six bucks. Now you know it's a Ford dealer. This thing now is like close to 30 bucks. Yeah, not a great deal. Look at that. Hey, it matches in. We want the Bronco. We want the Bronco. You know, Raptor, I should say. I really want the Raptor happy. You know, think it through. That's so generic now. Is it the Raptor Bronco? Is it the Raptor? Oh, my tools are back here. I can't. I can't remember anything, so I'll just throw everything over there, and my food, my hat, and my glasses. But look at that. See that? So it's interesting, the different time of day, how you can just see this interior better. So this is really probably the best, to me, this is probably the best view yet I've seen in this interior. How you really see the theme better, and the, the uh, seat belts and everything. That's, that's a, you know, that's an extra to get the uh, orange belts. Then it has the, the padding, you know, in the, in the roof liner there's so many little things that these things have that start to add up the bill on these uh, broncos just for anybody out there want to buy one you, know, you can get them really cheap but at the same time you start adding all those little things and bing bam done all right i said i'd be done talking a while ago right oh cool this is taking me in the back way so I get a little bit of the back. I just can't get over how it, at five o'clock. Eh, it's not five o'clock, but I just can't get over how they're close. This, this can't be right. There's no way. I mean, they had, believe it or not, in this area, they make these construction companies abide by times. It just really kills the traffic. But I don't know. Anyways, we're gonna get the back road adventure. So a little bit, nothing radical, just the back roads, and we'll share that with you. Oh, the love of traffic, right? So, you know, I just think to myself, it's this is kind of weird here because before I even had my eyes on this Raptor, I literally this past weekend just kind of started searching around. I was thinking, what about the 392 Jeep Rubicon market's doing? And I was just like, you know what it's doing? And sure enough, it's still very, very expensive. Not many out there at all. I mean, I've had so many Jeep Wranglers and you I mean i've had a ton and I've, they've all been custom and for the most part i've had a few that I didn't get too radical but the whole point is i just think to myself wow it's so funny how i was telling myself do i get a, do i go try to get a cheap rubicon 392 and it's so one part of me is like i just have had so many of those uh those those jeeps and you know i just i mean i've had so many I've had at least six Jeep Wrangler Rubicons. And then you gotta add the uh, the Gladiator, add the Gladiator, really nice Gladiator, but it's the interior. So the interior in the huge, huge difference in the, the comfort and the roominess of the Bronco to the Jeep 392. I mean, it's huge. That's the first thing. And then for me, it turns into an argument with the Jeep people, but the, you know, just the suspension, the drivetrain, the, the ride, it's just night and day. Yeah, I know, the 392 will beat this thing. I get all that. But at the same time, it's not like it's the end of the world for me. Fastest Raptor. I mean, like I said yesterday, when I was driving this, I was like, I don't know. I think my Bronco Wild Track's pretty much pretty good, too, you know, which they are. So yeah, but I just, the whole reason I'm bringing this up is, I think it's funny that I was looking at a 392, the Highline Wrangler Rubicon, and not even ever thinking to myself, I never even researched Raptors. I never like went and said, okay, well, you know what, now I'll go look at the Raptors and see what uh, what's that, you know, I didn't even, in all reality, I didn't, really didn't think the Raptors really, I mean, I already know, there's not gonna be Raptors out there. That's probably why I didn't do it, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Isn't that weird? And, you know, here I'm looking at 392 and thinking, yeah, do I maybe get one of those? Not even realizing that this is going to play out? Wow. Typical, you know, dominant left driver, doesn't want to move. It's like, nope, I ain't moving. Nope, I ain't moving. Nope, I ain't moving. So we got to go around them. But, you know, I just don't get that. I just don't get it. Just move. I mean, why? I mean, what's the big deal? They're just moving over in your car. I mean, why? I mean, sincerely, from you know, they just aren't on the roads a lot. I just, I have compassion. I get a little aggravated, but yeah, I get it. You just, you just don't, you 
you just don't get it. All right, we're gonna go some back road. It isn't off road. It's just the real twisties and over the hill and around the corners. And let's see how this bad boy handles, right? So I put it in sport mode. Hey, you know what? I just want to see how it does regular. I haven't gone to the more aggressive stuff. I just want to kind of break her in. And I already know that, you know, I just know. But here's the thing. I don't have premium gas in this. So the real answer is when I get the premium gas in this vehicle, then yeah, am I going to go ahead and then put it in the sport mode and have a little bit more fun? I will. And I really think that if I, do I, if I get 17 miles per gallon in this vehicle, I mean, if I accomplish that, wow, wow. I mean, then I'll be like, wow, that wasn't too shabby. The only difference is I'm paying more for gas. It isn't like you can't, you can run 87 octane these cars. I mean, you're not going to get the performance out of them. So, you know, is it really, is it harm? I can't, I don't, I can't see it harm the engine just because the ECM just automatically adjusting what you can or can't do with it. So, but you know, once again, when you want to get into it, it's not going to do what you want it to do. So that's why you put the premium in it. Yeah. And for me, Am I going to be driving this thing a thousand miles a week? You know, I'll get my fun out of it. I'll get it. I'll run around, do my thing, try to get her broken in, and that'll be it. Here we go. Arthur Godfrey, if anybody knows the legend radio person, this was Arthur Godfrey's property here near the Leesburg Airport. That's where the Leesburg Airport began was a gentleman named Arthur Godfrey, the great radio legend back from, like, the, I guess, the 50s. And he owned all that property called Beacon Hill. Now, you may think I'm making this up, but in the 2000, I looked at that property to maybe build a home up on that area back in 2000. And I walked the property where Arthur Godfrey used to reside there. And I saw the the uh, exotic fencing. He he had exotic animals living on this this. You know, this right now backside of what they call Beacon Hill. It's called Beacon Hill because it was the airport. This was the beacon to the airport that he he created. And so for this here, he had exotic, you know, he I think he had giraffes, he had tigers, he had elephants. And so I walked his property, and of course, all the fencing, big, big, tall, metal, strong, you know, I would have to say eight foot, ten foot high. You know, metal, uh, you know, iron rod fencing. You know that he, I don't, he had around his property to cage the, uh, the exotic animals. Yeah, that's factual. So I actually walked that property in 2000 before they began to develop that that whole uh, area back there, and I just about bought some land back there to build a custom home. That was in the year 2000, and it was pretty cool to go see that. And what's really crazy is that Beacon Hill is a golf course community of you know, the High Line, the rich, you know, it's the million, $2 million, $3 million homes in that community in this area. And it's just, it's been unbelievable. So that, that was, that was built back in like the early 2000 years. They started doing everything. And then in 2008, when the economy crashed, the golf course by 2010 had to bankrupt, it's bankrupt itself. It's hard to believe that a prominent, wealthy area around here had this prominent elite golf club. And when it's all said and done, the golf club couldn't sustain itself during the hard economic times. You think that through, or people think that everybody's just going spending money, spending money. And you know what happens in the end is is yeah people go broke and people don't want to pay the golf course fees there were so many foreclosed homes in that community back there yes is everybody buying the houses to flip them yeah so that so the it doesn't exist that really nice country club uh that was built for a golf course community it doesn't exist okay so this is a town of waterford this is established back in the early 1700s maybe late 1600s and I'm here in the back roads, and it's kind of a twisty, turny road, and I got a guy in front of me, but I'm kind of doing the back road, and then, you know, when the Broncos eating up the bumps and taking the corners really well, and, and I think it's just, uh, it's just healing really neat. I like the lights. 
I like the yellow light look. If you can kind of see that, you probably can't. I really like that. You know, the brakes on this, you know, I kind of talked about the brakes are great. The transmission it was really weird yesterday when we took a test drive in this vehicle. When we took off, I put it into the sport mode setting here and the vehicle kind of uh, had a big clunk. Like it was shifting out into another uh, setting. It was just a weird, it wasn't a comforting feeling. I'm thinking, oh no, it's just a transmission future problem. Yeah, look at that house. You know, that's like the 1950s, you know, probably house right there. And there's a gentleman, Will Scruggs, the owner of Red Top Cab, used to own this, uh, this land back here. And I know him because I was an oil industry salesman and they, I had their fleet of uh, cabs. I used to sell them about 150,000 gallons of gasoline a month. It took me about three years to get that account. The guy, J.E. Nichols and Will Scruggs, were the, they're, they're no longer around, but and they were tough cookies. It took me a long time to get through to them. I took away the Chevron account from them, and I got the account to be servicing their uh, fueling for all their taxis. They're, Back in the you know the 70s, 80s, 90s, there's a Corvette. 70s, 80s, 90s, they were a prominent, dominant taxi cab company in this area, and they had their own fuel tanks, and I supplied the fuel for them. And that was a great. That was one of my first big accounts. Where back in the fuel industry, that was my true beginnings to me. Really, kind of starting to make some decent money in my life. And that was back in 91, 92. So here we are in the Waterford area. And I can so remember driving back here back in 1989. I remember driving down this back road for the first time. I was making sales calls to sell fuel and fuel oil. And, and, uh, and I just remember driving back here like, wow, this is such a cool area. And it doesn't look any different. I mean, so this area here, there's nothing any different from 1989 when I drove back in this road because it's all an historic district. And you know, what you know, if you're in a historic district, you can't just decide that you're going to go ahead and start doing all this renovation work to your home and make it look all different without going through the proper steps and procedures of the county, count, the town and county ordinances that kind of govern that you know, these historic towns. And then this is a really nice house that I always, I always, I like the house, but I don't like it. It's next to the elementary school. And that actually just sold here a few years ago. And uh, they put all their fencing in, just a really nice setting. I'm not excited about the school, but look at that old school. So that's school, that's Waterford Elementary School. Yeah, that's that's 50s, 60s. You know, just every people that have gone through. Here's a beautiful stone home where an older lady, I think, owns that. And just, you know, they don't, you don't see, it's so crazy, you don't see much activity around people's homes. You drive by my place, you'll see me out in the front yard half the time, out to shop, washing cars, you know, just, once again, beautiful area. And and I always wanted to move here to the Waterford area. You know, it, yeah, of course, It's and I just about did. I found a nice piece of property, actually a few miles that way west, that I just about finagled a deal to, to trade my property for another property, but it just didn't plan, pan out. But then here's a piece of property that, believe it or not, there's a feng shui. I have a whole story of the feng shui master that came to my property. I'm not, I'm not lying to you. I wanted to buy that property right there. And I had an offer on my property and what was my parents' property next door to me and I'm not embellishing. And I even had a vision of this. I'm not lying to you. When I moved out of property in 91, I always thought to myself that one day a person would, would come to my property and want to buy it and pay me pretty good money. And you know what? You know, I'm not embellishing here. A Asian, look at this here. So that's part of that property. So if I would have bought that, then that would have been mine. And this is another beautiful home here. This has changed hands many times, but it's just a beautiful, I don't like where it is on the side of the road, too close. So, so an Asian uh, realtor guy came to my property and he said, I have a woman in Hong Kong that wants your property. I'm, I'm not embellishing on this. I'm not, I'm not making a story up. Okay. And 
apparently she had a dream of my property and apparently the way my my pond you can't my pond's been ruined by the lily pads but back before that all happened beautiful clean pond just beautiful setting and and so anyways so this asian gentleman said that he would be in touch with me so he reached back out to me and said okay i have a lady that is in hong kong that would like to purchase your home and I'm like, well, I can already tell you it's going to be expensive because I didn't, I'm not really wanting to leave, but okay. Well, then I disclosed to him that my parents, this is the irony. This was in November of 2001, 2001, right after the 911 attacks in New York City, where the country was very nervous. We were going to war. I mean, it was a very sad time in our country. You could just, and then we had the uh, sniper shooter of DC, just a really bad time. And the real estate market had just, had, you know, kind of been uh, taking an adjustment. Real estate market was quiet. And so this individual wanted to buy then both the properties. And I, because I disclosed to him that that's my parents' property across the way, but that home had just been completed in 2000. Another, you know, pretty views up here. So in 2000, the home was built 2001 November the Asian now not only my property but both properties so I told him two million dollars and and so that would have netted me a million dollars because believe it or not when I first bought my home out here where, you, where I live now I had put no money in. I moved into 91 and I did no renovation the barn hadn't been updated nothing and I was with the wife going we owe little to nothing on this home and now's the time to leave because we're going to now have to spend a lot of money to start updating this property in the barn, and blah, 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 blah. So he's like, okay, okay, let's do it. So now we're going back and forth on a $2 million. We're down to like a million six between the two properties. We're trying to get a million eight. And so we're kind of getting within reason of the two properties. And my goal was to have a million dollars for me to go be buy something and just pay for it and be done with it. So now... We start going around, and oh my gosh, my wife and I drive around, and it's just, oh my gosh, I can't believe, you know, we're driving on these dirt roads, and I'm like, nope, 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 there's no way I'm living down these dirt roads in this county, because I have nice cars, and I, there's no way I'm going to be this constant, my car is trash. Much of anything, because a lot of the properties we liked were down dirt roads. Finally, we find a piece of property over in Lincoln, Virginia, which is really between Percival and, and Middleburg, Virginia, it's south, uh, really more southwest east of the, more southwest of this area, and not really convenient per se, but we found this beautiful home that had been on the market for like two years, and, or I should say maybe a year. Beautiful custom-built home, had a pond, just beautiful, three-level, gorgeous home. And the guy wanted a million four for it. Steve McCarthy was the guy's name, McCarthy Building. So I would talk to the realtor, and I'm like, what's going on? What's going on? And he's like, well, nobody's doing nothing. It's been on the market a while. Why don't you just throw us something? So I throw, I tell him I'll pay him a million dollars for the property because it's just, it's 12 acres of land. It's already near Millburg. It's worth, I mean, today that property's worth $3 million. No doubt in my mind, two and a half million. So anyways, so now my wife, my wife, she would not sign that contract for anything in the world. She would not do it, would not, would not do it. It was, it was an argument between the husband and the wife. It took like a week. Finally, my wife signed the contract to buy that house for a million dollars. And if we get for a million dollars, I was going to get a deal. And, and also it would make it so if I sold both these properties, we'd have the money just to pay for it outright. The minute, this is, this is, this is what's incredible. The real estate market back in the 2003, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, it took off in the fall of 2001. Unbeknownst to most people, the real estate market was actually starting to brew right after 911. When I put that, wrote that contract, the bidding war started. The bidding war in that house. Other people came to the table and he ended up getting a million four for the home. Back in November of 2000, it was December by the time the dust settled from us trying to buy that house. And so the reality is the real real estate market started to take off the D.C., Virginia, Maryland area in the late fall of 2001. 
and then that's when the no doc loans, you know, were, were, were going on big time and people are buying houses, flipping them, renting them out, the exact same scenario that we're in today. But today you have stricter guidelines of uh, getting the loans and proof of income and everything else. But anyways, so, so then, so it all, when it all came to an end, we could not find a property. We could not find a piece of property that we could agree on. And, and then the numbers, I just got tired of going back and forth the numbers, but I just came to closure, forget it, and it's not gonna work. And, and I just, because I've got a business here that I can use and I can run and I'm so close to the main artery to get around. It's huge for me, for my convenience. So we finally came to closure by like late December, first of the year, that we're just not going to, uh, we're not gonna move. So then, yeah, so then is now, that house there, that back part of that house, you know, I built that part of that back of that house, that was added on, that was actually added on in 2014. The front left side of the house, where the cars are parked in front of, that was added in 2008. And then the barn was rebuilt in 2002. Yeah, but the whole, the whole thing is money, 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 money. So I went from owing, owing like little to nothing on that home to owning a ton of money in that house. Yeah. All right, we're back in. Thought I just the feng shui, but you know what? I never got. I never did explain that. I gotta. I gotta. I gotta fa finalize that. So the feng shui. Supposedly, the feng shui expert. And I, I got so distracted talking about the properties and the venture, but this is the. This is a real story. Supposedly, there's a feng shui master of the Eastern Seaboard. And I'm not lying to you. He came to my property with a few other people, and he walked the property. And supposedly, he's the feng shui master of the way your land lays, the energy, and this is it. I mean, my property, well, you, he claims this is like the feng shui piece of property of the Eastern Seaboard. Or, you know, whatever. Okay, I mean, that's the price he came here, and that's why the... Because we were getting close to making a deal on selling the both properties, but we were kind of got stuck in the price. And my wife and I, you know, got stuck and we couldn't find anything we could come to agree on where we could live. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, beyond, but I have a business here, so I, I was kind of scrapped because I have a, I have a business that's legal here in this property and the zoning and ordinances. And then I've got access to the main roads to get in and out. The other property looked at way off the beaten path. It'd just be more driving, more traffic. It just wasn't meant to be. But the whole point is supposedly the feng shui master came to my property and he said, this is the energy. This is the place. <laughs> I know. Have you watched my video right now? They're like, this guy's so full of BS. I just can't take it. Turn it off. All right. Well, hey, I think I've done okay. I think I got some pretty cool energy here. I think I, I think the energy's been nice to me, man. So uh, I'm I'm believing it. I'll take it. All right, everybody. Once again, thanks for watching. I'm making another video. Yeah, I think we're done for the day. So uh, God bless. See you in the morning. All right, I thought I'd just do a little walk around once I got a home in the driveway just to give you more of the look of the truck on the different angles and the different theme that it has from the other one. I mean, it really is. This thing is so comfortable. I, mean, I am so glad I bought this. You just have no idea. This was very hard to come to closure to buy this vehicle. And these here, see, here's the rock rails right here and these steps actually attach which that's pretty cool because if you don't want the look you could take off those rock rails i mean you could take off the step and keep the rock rails on hey, look here what does this mean accessory ready so what can you put in here isn't that pretty cool i mean i was saying yesterday that this thing here there's just infinite of what you can do to this vehicle it's just incredible and how you can just do so many mods to this vehicle it just makes it so much fun that's just the beauty of owning these type of off-road vehicles and this thing here i mean it has the european look to me this truly has that european look just think over in europe which you like if i went to europe as vehicle i know it isn't that easy to do that but if you did you know i bet you i'd get two hundred three thousand dollars for this vehicle i mean i'd be amazed it's just because of 
it just has that it just has that look you know what i mean and that's what i when i first saw it I, that's kind of why i was like i don't know you know that's such a kind of more of the the big body flares and everything else you know so uh all right that's it i've been talking all day about all the the vehicle right look at that the trail link look at the fox you know, I was growing up, Fox was on dirt bikes. I never dreamed that Fox shocks would one day be in my life on off-road capable uh, vehicles. Isn't that something? Just incredible. Yeah, anyway, so what I got to do, hopefully tomorrow I have time, window tint. I think I'll do a strip across the window. So that's it for sure tomorrow. I don't think I'll do anything here in the back. I mean, it's already good. It gets too dark in the interior. I just don't like that. So for sure, I think uh, two side windows, a strip across the window, I think that'd be good. And I really should look into a nice brush bar. I'm gonna look into that. I haven't been impressed. Ford had a nice one, but I've seen the aftermarket. I'm you know, really impressed. And then, you know, is this ready? Is this the modular bumper where it's, it's actually uh, winch ready? I'd love to have a winch in this thing. I mean, sincerely, this is a vehicle here more than any. I say it all the time. Yeah, I should keep this one forever. I mean, I should. I mean, this is just this type of stuff. You know as well as I do, 10 years from now? There's no doubt in my mind if you took care of this vehicle 10 years from now. I, I, be, I bet you'd still get close to $100,000 for this vehicle. I mean, I, I would, if you take care of it, you didn't have, like, if it had, like, 10,000 miles on it, yeah. I bet you even had... 80,000, 100,000 miles on it, it'd still be worth $50,000, $60,000. I'd be willing to bet that it's pretty accurate. But I was saying earlier is what I should do, let's drive over to the F-150 uh, Raptor. What's really weird is I swear my other Broncos, this see here, you pull down. You don't pull up. <laughs> I swear my other Broncos that way. I wish they had memory seat, but, you know, these doors come off and everything. But here's... Here's what I'm thinking. I mean, I don't know. I mean, this ride's so nice right now, but here's just an idea. This has 37s. I so much wanted the Raptor 37. I just about did a deal over a year ago on a Raptor 37. And it was about this time, yeah, it's about this time a year ago that I was I had a deal done at Coon showing forward in a 37 Raptor tire package, but I just, uh, the numbers just, just didn't work so i didn't do it but so here's my thoughts i take those tires and i put those tires on this and as far as i know so for me even for me i'd have to research it i think i'm pretty sure that this is already good to go for the 37 inch wheel package so i don't think i don't think i have to lift anything i'm pretty sure we're good but i'm not positive so there's that so i take 37s Take the 35s off, 37s here, take the 35s, and do I sell them? See, do I sell them and I get some good money out of them to, to let me get like 39s? So I put 39s in this. I mean, this, or what I do is I take off 37s to 35s. 35s, I used to have another Toyota 4Runner Pro, and, I, and these tires are 17 inch wheels, and those 35s, believe it or not, fit on this 4Runner. And it just gives it such a cooler look. And it's something how this is so, like, outdated degree. Even though this, to me, I'm sorry, this, to me, for a Jeep, compared to a Jeep as far as just over the road and, you know, bumps and this and that. I'm not talking about the serious back wooding trail. I'm just saying over the road, back roads, haul tail, that Charity Pro, I've done it. It is awesome. That thing just that thing's borderline like the uh, the Raptors. That suspension just eats up the bumps. You know, I've had the Jeep Wranglers. People want to lie because I've had them. I've gone down the back roads and I've gone through these wicked ruts and I've gone off the road. Yes, bad. It's because it has a solid axle front and rear. You can't do that. You can't do that. You know, the Jeeps are awesome for the back road and up the side of the mountain. 
Yes, they're awesome. But when you get on that open road where you have these incredible and bumps and imperfections, the Jeep, there's no way it can hang with these, these vehicles because they have independent front suspension. I mean, that's, just, that's what separates the Jeep. You know, but you'll argue the guy. The Jeep is the better freaking overall vehicle. It's like, if you're going the backwoods, yes, no doubt. If you're living on the back roads and doing some serious fast driving and ruts and serious off-roading back roads, no, no. The Jeep will not hang. He'll be off the road because I've done all this stuff. You, the whole vehicle just goes, you know, way, the whole front end of the car just turns into a just a, a solid block that just drifts right off the side of the road. Where's my dogs? All right. There's an idea, right? Do I do it? I don't know. Hey, dogs. Yeah, see for me. Just doesn't know. Okay, there's one. All right. See, I, 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 I got to get my my horns on my my... Do I do it? I mean, come on, think this through. I really wanted to get a bar. And see here, without the bar, without the bar here, if I put the horns here, it's going to block right over that, uh, my camera. So I don't want to do that. If I put the bar, that brush bar here, it positions so that the, the, uh, the bull horns, but it'll take away my lights. So I don't know, maybe that actually may not work. The way, <laughs> hey. Here's the wife. What does she like driving? Look, it's the tremor. It's a tremor truck. She loves driving a tremor truck. She thinks that that Maverick is more manly than that. Come on back. So, I mean, look at that. Is that just a... That, that Ford Ranger, that's just such a great truck. But at the end of the day, that's the better package. That's the better package than that over there. Yeah, there she goes. All right, that's it. A lot of talking, a lot of yabba dabba doing. Where's the black ram? Anybody know? What happened to my black ram? To be continued.